What's good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And this I want to break down what's going on with the overall market and break down some very important levels on SPY, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of tickers out there. And break down what data is coming out from the market is going to cause a big move. And what you should know about the stock market as we approach this week. But before I break anything down with all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I'm firstly not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends very soon in just about nine days. So check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the markets. So looking at SPY, this is starting to look a little bit more bearish. We're actually, we have this bearish cross on the PPO that's starting to widen. But we're currently sitting at support at our... 449.5 area at the 20 EMA. If we get a break below that, we're going to head all the way down to 448, in my opinion, as the market is starting to weaken. If you look at Tesla, it's also down in the pre market, still looking relatively weak. It is below the four hour 200 EMA, and we're basically approaching this imbalance right over here. So it all depends on can we hold above 242.5 around that area? Otherwise, there could be even more downside. But before I talk more about these charts and like break down Tesla, uh, let me just talk about some other factors that will affect the markets. So for today, it is Tuesday, September 5th. Don't forget that 30 minutes after the market opens, okay, or at about 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time or New York time, we have the economic optimism report coming out and the factory orders month over month. This data is going to be important. It's the only piece of data that's going to be significant for today. And this may cause some volatility in the markets. We'll see if this leads to like the uh, an exaggerated drop in the markets or even like more downside or not. Uh, just watch for some higher volatility at this moment and be very careful once we approach 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time or 30 minutes after the market opens. Besides that, there's some news that came out right over here about what you should know before the market opens. Uh, so far, we did see stocks slip a bit, especially looking at the previous month. Uh, we did see a nice rebound as the market's been trying to push higher, but now the futures are starting to lower. And with that happening, this is leading to more downwards momentum for SPY and other ETFs. Now, there's more talk coming out about how Mercedes and BMW are going to take on Tesla. And this is like, once again, trying to trivialize Tesla. I don't really interpret this this way in real life, but they're trying to push this narrative that with all these other EVs entering with their new concepts, they're going to be competing with Tesla. But the bottom line is Tesla's still a monster, no matter what they try to say. So it doesn't really change my view of it. Uh, looking out, uh, there are more things going on right over here. Disney is trying to switch to a live TV option from uh, Hulu. And this is, once again, some good news for them. It's trying to pull its channels. Uh, and this is going to, once again, help them. So they're battling with some contract fees right here. We're going to be watching to see if this works out. And if, if that ends up being the case, uh, this would be allowing more coverage for them. Besides that, there's another AI designer arm estimated for share to IPO very soon. So if you're interested in that, so there are more IPOs coming out. Anyways, last but not least, we have some earnings. Nothing too big, to be honest with you all. Uh, just like GitLab and a few others. Then for Wednesday, we have GameStop's earnings. I'm going to be watching that. And that's pretty much it as far as data and stuff goes. But now let's break down these charts. How are things looking? For Tesla, I told you all that I expected to come down this level right here. We're just going to focus on this one for now. So let's not worry about this part. Uh, we're not going to worry about this end right here. Let's just focus on this support zone right here. So we're going to be watching 235 to 237 on Tesla. If Tesla breaks below 242, you know, it's very likely it's going to come all the way down here towards where that imbalance just so happens to be at 237 to 235. And I, I believe there's a good chance it's going to come down. I told you guys there are two possibilities. Maybe we get a little bounce here before it comes down, or we get like a bigger bounce before it eventually comes down. It's got to be one of those two. So far, it's struggling to get much of a bounce, so it might be very, very minor. And it looks like there is going to likely be more downside coming. So just watch for this target to be met on uh, Tesla. And then when it comes to other tickers, let me just switch over like this. Uh, I believe it's also very important that we pay you know close attention to what's going on with you know, spy and etc. Because Apple is looking like it's going to dictate it. So spy is starying to turn more bearish. I was thinking we might get a little pop before it ends up dropping. There is still a possibility of that with the economic optimism report. But if we end up breaking below our 20 EMA, I do think spy is going to start coming down to 448 very, very soon. So I'm leaning more bearish. And I think that's going to be more profound. Uh, same thing with the QQQ. 
I don't think I drew this out. I may have drawn this out. So there is potential for a little balance, but it looks like it's failed to do so after this bearish divergence. Look for maybe a little back test of these higher levels before we start to drop harder. It looks more bearish overall on the QQQ. And then finally for like Apple, no difference. Apple's looking more bearish too. Uh, there could be a little pop right over here when we open before it starts to sink, but I see it going down to 185 eventually. Either we get a back test of like 188 to 189 and then we start sinking or it just starts sinking from here. It looks more bearish and that's going to drag the market to some extent. And then NVIDIA also looking kind of weak, currently at 480. I was talking about this thing coming down to 475 very soon. This imbalance down here is attracting it. It looks more bearish to me overall. Could we retest like 485 and then start dropping? It's a possibility, but it looks more bearish overall. Anyways, I want to now talk about my charts on Webull. The MACD is looking more bearish on Tesla, especially we have this imbalance down here. Uh, it's acting, it's once again pushing Tesla down. Uh, could we get a little, a little like push up to try to get above the 200? I mean, if we get above 245, there is a potential for it, this thing to get up to 249, but for now it doesn't look that imminent. So it, there could be a back test of the 200, like 245, and then we end up projecting off that. But if Tesla breaks below 242, then I think it's going to sink all the way down to that zone I was talking about, 235 to 237. And that's going to be the next major support. We'll see if that holds or not. If that breaks, 230 is likely going to come. But I think we're going to be watching that support first uh, to see how Tesla holds. It looks more bearish overall, though. Uh, same thing with SPY. We are looking a little bit more bearish as of right now. But we need to see SPY break below the 20 EMA to turn more bearish. If that breaks, we're going to head all the way down to 448. For Apple, Apple is looking weaker right now. We got a four-hour cross on the PPO. We're going to be watching 186.75. If that breaks, we're going to eventually see this thing come down to 185 or lower. I was talking about Apple sinking. I was hoping we'd get or think we might get one last pop up before it drops or it could just drop from here. Uh, it's looking less likely that we're going to get much of a pop. And it may not be much of a push. I think Apple is going to start cooling off on the RSI very, very soon. QQQ is also starting to turn bearish with the PPO crossover right over here. Leaning a little bit more bearish or it breaks below the 20 EMA at 375. We're going to be watching it come all the way down to about 372. I think the odds greatly favor that. NVIDIA, don't forget, uh, the, the PPO looks more bearish on it from these standpoints. Uh, 476 is going to be a support zone to watch for. If that breaks, I think it's going to come all the way down to about 470, then potentially even this imbalance at 466. NVIDIA looks more bearish too. Anyways, guys, uh, we're going to be watching the dollar. I was talking about the dollar breaking its resistance since we had the inverse head and shoulders on it. Uh, the dollar is starting to break out. That's a bearish signal. And the VIX, it's going to approach its support at 12.73 to 13. That's where support is. If it hits that and bounces, you know, th the market is going to start or the market you know, potentially cooling off is what's going to cause this to happen. So the VIX is close to support, market at resistance. It looks like there is likely some downside coming. All right, guys. So anyways, I thank you all so much for listening. Hopefully this video was helpful. Don't forget to watch your levels very carefully. Watch your 200 EMAs, your 20 EMAs, and etc. Watch the levels I mentioned and get ready for the trading day. It's going to be very, very interesting. Thank you for listening, guys. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you, and peace out.